Welcome to Baltimore, Maryland, home of Orioles baseball, Ravens football, and famous for countless John Waters movies, Edgar Allan Poe's grave, and for one weekend each summer, Otacon. Hi, I'm Nicole. I'm here at Otakon to introduce you to the world of Japanese popular culture and the American fans of that culture, otaku. If you've never heard of anime or manga or the word otaku before, then this movie is for you. If you call yourself an otaku, own a hundred different anime on DVD, a bookshelf full of manga, the hottest J-pop music are into Japanese culture and fashion, then don't worry. This movie is for you, too. This documentary is for casual fans, hardcore fans, and curiosity seekers alike. Most importantly though, it's a movie for otaku, by otaku, about otaku. My goal is to give you an overview about Japanese popular culture, its fans, and its fandom. After that, we delve beneath the surface, profiling an award-winning cosplayer, and learn about the deeper motivations at the heart of fandom. Along the way, we explore, document, and celebrate the passions, richness, and diversity of America's true otaku community. annually at the Baltimore Convention Center near the city's Inner Harbor, a cultural, nightlife, and shopping district. Otakon is a convention for fans of Japanese pop culture. The Japanese word otaku is the term many of these fans use to describe themselves. And that's where the name Otakon comes from, otaku convention. In 1999, attendance at the convention topped 4,600. In 2010, more than 29,000 fans were in attendance. Japanese pop culture, or Cool Japan as author Roland Keltz describes it, refers to Japanese anime, manga, video games, music, and fashion. Conventions celebrating Cool Japan are a relatively recent phenomenon and have grown out of a long history of cross-cultural sharing between Japan and the United States. Following World War II, Japan was heavily influenced by American technology, music, and cinema. Walt Disney cartoons had a profound influence on Japanese animated films, or anime. Japanese manga, similar to American comic books and graphic novels, exploded in popularity. During the 1960s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, many Japanese anime, manga, and other television programs were adapted for English audiences. Titles like Astro Boy, Speed Racer, Star Blazers, Robotech, Sailor Moon, Voltron, and Pokemon, to name a few, became widely popular in the United States. In the late 1990s and 2000s, an explosion of dubbed and subtitled anime and manga titles flooded U.S. markets. Since the mid-1980s, anime conventions have been popping up all over the United States, giving American otaku a place to share their common interests, learn about new titles, and find rare merchandise. So what is an otaku? Well, different people have different takes on it. To be honest, um, I didn't ever know what an otaku was until the first time I went to Otakon and then they did this whole skit, you know you're an otaku if, and I was going, what is an otaku? I, I guess from what I've gleaned from it is an otaku is someone who enjoys anime, I'm guessing. Um, I don't know if there's like levels or something. An otaku, in, in, this, in a general sense, it means somebody who's into anime and manga and Japanese culture. Um, it's just a sort of degree 
um, otaku means kind of like means an extreme, um, in, in, in my personal opinion. It's Japanese for geek, nerd, enthusiast. It's actually a derogatory term in Japanese, so... However, it's also one of those things that over at least in this country and also in Japan recently, more so because of us, it started to be embraced as a, almost like a term of endearment. I may be off, so don't kill me if I'm completely wrong with this. I never studied Japanese, but someone who lives in their parents' house still who doesn't have a, is obsessed with something and doesn't really work on anything else. It's, it's just like a whole bunch of people pretending to be Japanese, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Otaku is just the real love of anime, things of that, anime, manga, it's culture. just, yeah, the, the culture. culture itself. Yeah, otaku is an interesting word because it means something different to everyone. I mean, after, you know, in the 80s in Japan, it was such a dangerous thing because of the otaku killer. And, um, but to me, as an American, otaku, it, it doesn't mean just fan, um, it means anime fan. The word fan comes from the word fanatic. You, you have to really love, I think, fans aren't people who just kind of like things. Fans are people who really love it and kind of have a passion for it. Um, so, I mean, to be otaku, you, it's not just, oh, I like anime. It's I have a passion for this. I want to experience it, and I want to experience it with people, which is why I come here. I know that in Japan, if I say I'm an otaku, they could say, of what? But here, I would consider myself an otaku with the meaning being anime, manga, and video game fan. Uh, when I was younger, in high school, it was a big thing to be an otaku. Like, if you were an otaku, you were like, oh yeah, I'm otaku, and it was cool. But I think since I've gotten older, it's become more of just something we don't really say anymore because it seems almost childish now. I believe it is used way too often by people who really don't know what it means. It's just become this generic term that some of us use to describe ourselves, but it's really more of others use to describe us. I say if you're a fan, call yourself a fan. It's your obsession, call it your obsession. Otaku is a good term because it describes somebody who is not necessarily just into anime, but usually has some interest in anime and then pop culture as well. Ranch and otaku, and it's, everyone says it goes both ways. It can be derogatory or it can be uh, a, a, just a terminology like geek is. I'm one of the otakus. I'm the one who buys all the stuff and then have no money for food and starve the rest of the con. But it's worth it for that Miku doll. That Miku doll. Yes, I would consider myself an otaku. I'm not obsessive, but I am. it is a big part of my life. I mean, I not only have a blog about anime, games, and fandom, but I contribute to a blog called Japanator about it. Am I a taco? Oh, that's a hot question. Um, I say yes and no to that because I fully admit that my anime knowledge is dated because when I really got into anime is 80s, 90s, and then really got back into it during the heyday of ADV, Funimation, and with really them duking it out. So, I would just phrase a Taku as someone who is, and you, this is the phrase that I'm constantly repeating, is someone that is passionate about anything. Do you consider yourself an otaku? Mildly. There are worse than I am. <laughs> I'm fairly certain, but I am fairly otaku-ish. Okay. Would you consider yourself otaku? Because this is your first convention, or...? Mm, I wouldn't. No, it. you wouldn't. You wouldn't. So what would you consider yourself then? Just like a passionate fan? A strange bystander who wears... A strange bystander. Who wears blonde wigs for no reason. Ah. Did your friends put you up to the blonde wig? No, actually, I wore a blonde wig while I was being Tamari. <laughs> I not only attend at least three conventions a year, but I volunteer at two of them. There's rarely a day goes by where I don't think about anime and fandom and my status as a fan of anime. Inner circle wise, otaku seems to start becoming a status symbol of things. And so it really depends on your opinion of it. Personally, in the community, I think otaku is a fine word, you know. It is just, you know, we're otaku. It is what we are. We're fans of Japanese culture. So I'm fine with it. Do I consider myself a taku? Yes and no, but um, I consider all of us fans. Cool Japan conventions like Otakon were created to provide fans a place to gather, to make new friends, to explore and share aspects of Japanese culture, and to express common interests. 
Events at the Baltimore Convention Center are geared precisely for that. At Otakon, you could attend concerts by musical guests from Japan, listen in on the latest industry news and company announcements at a panel, or take a workshop and learn cool stuff from other otaku. There's also LARPing, anime showings, late night raves, an artist's alley, a dealer's room selling everything imaginable, a huge video game room. The list goes on and on. The other big thing happening all around you is cosplay. Cool Japan conventions are like Halloween night on steroids. Almost everyone is dressed up as their favorite characters. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cosplay is, I think how it's broken down, is like costume play or something like that. Uh, cosplay is where you dress up as a character, and I'm dressed up as Belarus today. Um, she normally doesn't wear glasses, but I'm wearing them because I'm otherwise blind. Well, for cosplay, I like it because it's a creative out, um, outlook or way to express yourself. Okay. Um, ways of interpreting your favorite characters, appreciating them, appreciating the actors that play them. Um, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. I looked around and said, wow, this is really pretty. I love all this clothing. Yeah. And I already do theater work. So. Okay, so you do theater and costume work. I do yes. that as well. So it was very easy just to go, okay, well, I don't fit in right now. Let's go mix some clothing, that'll make it better. So what got you into cosplay? What made you interested in that? I don't know, I, I guess I kind of like the attention. <laughs> and I don't know, it, it was a lot of fun looking at people's costumes last year. So I thought I might right. join in on fun. You just decided you'd yeah. hop right in. It's fun not to be yourself for a weekend. Yeah, be whoever you want. I mean, I'm very girly right now, which is very the opposite of how I usually am. How are you normally? Very brash, very loud, very talkative. <laughs> um, I burp a lot, usually. <laughs> What's your occupation outside of this? Actually, I'm a broadcaster for the United States Air Force. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so very different than what you are right now. Yes, very different um, from being a princess. Okay. Well, it's kind of fun because you get to dress up as a character and sort of acting character sometimes. Like, if I see a, a character who's like dressed up as a Russia, Russia's like my big, like, I love my big brother Russia, so... Uh, yeah, and so I go after him, and I'll take any competitors off out with the knife, like Lithuania, at least in character. And it's like, it's like a lot of fun because it's kind of getting outside of your normal personality, and you get to be someone other than yourself, kind of like how actors feel. I think. In order to actually be one of those people who can become a character, you have to be an actor at heart, or else it won't go through. Like I. I know I tried a few times, but I just can't hold a straight face. I think I found out like if you play characters that people really love to begin with and you look like them, you don't even need to act the character. But just acting it is just like a little sprinkle of something. So it just makes it more fun. <laughs> There's different kind of genres of cosplaying, I guess. Um, there are those people who cosplay as like the the gothic people or the gothic animes, the occult horror stuff. So those are more people who would you would find dressed all in like full head clothes. There are some people who do like the school uniforms and if it's most of the time they usually do the summer or the fall season semester of the school uniforms which is the long sleeve coats and the long sleeve um, pants. Uh, my friend, she's cosplaying as an undertaker from this one anime show called um, the name of the show. Oh, Kuroshitsuji, Black Butler, right. Whoops, my bad. Um, and she has on all black head to toe and I feel so sorry for her because it is too hot <laughs> for all of that. But, and then you have your people who cosplay as the scandalous, skimpy, big chested anime female characters who wear nothing, basically. Like, um, there's this one character from a show called Slayers. Um, and she, I swear, she just has like big boobs, a little itty bitty bra, and like panties, and like knee high boots. Uh, I mean, it's crazy. But yeah, that's kind of the spectrum of costumes that you'll see here from robots to skimpy alien people. You're obsessed with one anime or one costume or something, and like you make it, you create it, and yours 
and then you go to conventions and people recognize you and people want your pictures and they want to talk to you or they're like, oh, how'd you make this? And it makes you feel really like just proud that this was yours and you did it yourself. And it's just, there's this whole glow about it. What exactly is this made out of? This it's phenomenal. is made out of paper mache. The top is a shoehorn. There's a couple of dog toys working their way around the center. A lot of newspaper and an Easter egg at the end. That is brilliant. <laughs> Amazing. And then your costume, did you did you make everything? Or? Um, yeah, just about everything except wow. for obviously the wig. Right. And the wings. Yeah. Cool. So you made this out of clay and the rest of it you sewed? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So are you did you did you sew your own as well? Um, actually, the person that helped her with that helped me with this as well. It's, it's my grandmother. She actually used to be a seamstress a wow. long time ago. I don't know any more information than that, but... <laughs> Do you make this out of paper mache or clay? This is clay. That's clay. Oh, neat. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm wearing two layers actually. Okay. This is and did you make all this yourself? I made everything except okay. for the wig and the socks. Including the hairpiece? Yes. Oh wow. Just... <laughs> ah. Shower rings. That's clever. I had to cover it with shellac because I two years ago I did this I wore this and it started coming off all over my face because Coloring didn't want to stay on. Ah, uh, so you you covered over it. Just yeah, I like had that. to cover it over. Cool. But um, everything else, the um, all of this is just basic cotton. Okay. And I pissed off my parents by taking over our screen and back porch and spending a week dyeing everything. Oh, you dyed all of this. Yeah. This is wow. That is gorgeous. And just anybody who ever wants to use wax resist, it's a lot harder than. And that's all wax. That was wax. The, the shirt is burlap, um, the dress and shirt are just cloth. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually leather and imitation bear teeth. Okay. Um, earrings are painted wood. Oh, cool. That's and um, what was the, the, the dagger? What is that made out of? It is a bone spearhead attached to wood, which is wrapped with leather. Is that real bone? Yeah. I'm pretty sure people just get into cosplay just for the sheer fact of it feeds a little bit of an obsession inside them. Like, I think everyone to a certain extent has it. It's just how how willing are you to actually put yourself out there? Because it's a little bit of a risk to actually cosplay just within the general public because, I mean, I remember when I did in the city once and like people were looking at you like, what are you doing? You're, you're such a weirdo. And like, you have to be able to stand up and be like, well, this is what I do and it's for fun. And this is what I do, and this is what I think is fun, so go and do what you think. It's like, it's just kind of showing people, you know, like, just, you can put yourself out there and it's okay, and people will accept you for it, because even, even on the streets you might not be that accepted, but maybe if you go into a convention, everyone will respect you for what you've done. But I think the real draw is just that it's just really fun, and you just have to be a little bit obsessive. <laughs> If someone does a really good job, they put a lot of heart and a lot of work in one of the costumes, they give them respect. But then again, even the people that put no work into it, they just like scrap together a costume and they come here, it's still better to have something and have fun than come just normal. Cool. Is it the same thing for you? Like what, what excites you about cosplay? I really like the attention, honest, honestly. Like, I like the <laughs> I like pictures. Okay. Cosplay is full, full, full of attention whores. Like, I can't explain how many people are always like, oh, people just cosplay for attention. I'm like, well, that's not necessarily true. A lot of people do it just because they want to show off their craft, but they do love the attention. But I have to say, just about everyone loves attention, and that's just being human. But there are people who basically wear almost nothing, like, you know, two band-aids and a cork. And <laughs> people are like, it's either, if, but the thing is, it's like, if you don't look good wearing two band-aids and a cork, don't wear two band-aids and a cork. Some people come to Otakon because they are fans of Japanese music and fashion. Of all the fashion styles I've seen, Lolita is the easiest to recognize, primarily because it features very elegant clothing, heavily influenced by Victorian and Rococo styles. So I'm here with... Melissa. And... Casey. Okay, oh, Casey. <laughs> Casey. Um, and you guys are both dressed in the Lolita fashion, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so I know we were talking about a little bit about how what is acceptable in Lolita fashion. Can you guys explain 
the do's and don'ts of Lolita fashion? Yeah, sure. Um, generally, it's you want to remain modest. So it kind of a rule of thumb is they want it around knee length, like maybe a little bit longer, just above, but you don't want any boobies falling out, gotcha. <laughs> anything like that. It's really about staying modest and staying, you know, true to the fashion. That's pretty much my take on it. I suppose. Okay. I think a lot of people don't realize that it's also about the fabrics too. A lot of people wear really, really poor fabrics and really, really poor lace and it just looks really awful. It's about looking elegant, it's about looking pretty, it's, um, it's all about that kind of aesthetic, the cupcake, A-line aesthetic with bloomers and petticoats and, oh god. <laughs> um, it's all about that kind of very girly, lacy, roughly kind of look. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends, it changes. There are different kinds. There's classic Lolita, which is more ruffle or streamlined, more floral prints and stuff. There's um, sweet, which is remotely what she's wearing right now. Um, that's an older kind of sweet. Uh, there's the pink, bubbly, toothache kind of sweet Lolita, which is like bubblegum pink with like cupcakes in her hair. Uh, there's gothic Lolita, which is mostly black with white or black with purple or blue, just dark colors. Uh -huh. One of my favorites that I'm not wearing right now is tartan or uh, plaid. plaid is a lot of fun. I like plaid a lot. Cool. This is probably my eighth wow. Otakon. Um, I skipped one one year, but I also go to Katsukon and Anime USA also. Okay. Cool. Uh, as for the fashion with the Lolita stuff, we meet up pretty much once a month and go do other things. Oh, wow. Anime conventions are a lot of fun to go to Lolita in, but it's uh, like a culture thing, too. Some okay. people do it every day. Um, but what we like to do is we like to do meetups to like museums. We'll go to the zoo. Um, we'll have picnics in the park. We went to Glen Echo, which was a lot of fun, yeah. too. There's a live journal community for different groups in different areas. The Maryland community is MD underscore Granger. Uh, there's a Northern Virginia community, there's a Southern Virginia community, they're all in the area. And um, the Maryland community does meetups pretty much once a month, once every two months. Okay. Um, more so in the summer, winter, fall. We don't do so much in the spring because of the rain and snow and stuff. I like a lot of things with the Japanese culture, not only Lolita. Okay. Yeah, I really like Lolita, but I also enjoy my anime. Okay. And <laughs> so it's not just about the Lolita for you? Yeah, I mean, when it comes to the fashion, I'm like really hardcore about it, okay. but I'll also enjoy my anime at the same time. <laughs> Got it. So the fashion itself for you is the Lolita, but in terms yeah. of, you're still part of the overall community right. that is Otakon. Right. So you're both otaku in that uh -huh. sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, with a lot of the Japanese Lolita brands at least, um, you don't get to see it before it arrives on your front door. And here you can see it, you can touch it, a lot of the places will let you try it on, some won't. Um, but I definitely love the buying, <laughs> the shopping is amazing. So much money gets wasted here. <laughs> <laughs> right now we're in the dealers, we're in the dealers room, which is the lowest floor um, in the BCC. Um, that's where all the dealers are for any type of anime. And there were a lot less people here before, but now you can see the, the crowds are really coming in. So anything you want to buy, anything you're looking for, whether it's clothing, whether it's manga, whether it's anime, it's down here. Well, I've seen a lot of Lolita fashion, uh, corsets, hentai. <laughs> what else have we seen? We've seen anything Pokemon. Um, beautiful swords, beautiful armor. A lot of lights, a lot of glow up things, glow up, glow in the dark things. We're selling t-shirts. Anything you can think of that's related to anime is really down here. Um, and they're sort of broken up into groups, like the clothing is all sort of in one area, and the manga is in another, and the anime is in another. Some of your more sketch interesting stuff is in another. And um, yeah, so they sort of broke it down into groups. So you just, you just follow and go around. There are countless otaku subgroups and niche groups, and each and every one has some form of online community. In fact, the internet is one of the main reasons why this fan base has grown so much in recent years. It's the primary way fans communicate with one another and explore their interests. The live journal community, Maryland Granger, offers Maryland and DC Lolitas a way to arrange meetups, post photographs, and make new friends. 
There are online communities for fans of Japanese fashion, news sites with articles about the latest anime titles, sites for gamers, dating websites, sites featuring imported Japanese merchandise for sale, sites for cosplayers where they can post photographs of their costumes, arrange photo shoots, and get feedback on their work. The number of websites is practically endless. The influence of the internet on various otaku subcultures and niche groups has helped foster a sense of community, both inside and outside of the convention space. The community itself is so um, is so tight knit, and that's only because I think of the internet because it's made communications a lot quicker, and people are able to talk. Like it, there's a lot of people, but it's small. It's like. If you live somewhere for a certain amount of years, you know a lot of people and you walk you walk into a store and you see someone and they know you and they're like they recognize you. It's kind of like that. So it's like after you go to so many conventions, you eventually go like, "Oh, I know who you are. I know who you are." As opposed to going to the first convention you've ever been to, or the first 3 or first 5, and you really don't know anyone and everything's like a big whirlwind and everything's jumbled up and you don't know where you're going. You don't know where everything is and then after a couple of years of going, you're like, Oh yeah, I know where to go eat food that's cheap. Oh, I know where that is. Oh, this is where the line is. Or, you know, you know the staff and, you know, the judges. You just, you know everybody. <laughs> if you put together a bunch of A-type personalities, mixed in with a bunch of attention whores, mixed in with a bunch of people wearing almost nothing, mixed in with boys and girls, you're gonna get a lot of drama. Because it's such a small group, it's like high school all over again. But it's one of those communities where also you stand up for people a lot. So it's like you learn who your friends are right away. It's like it's not like it takes you like years to like know this person. You basically learn about a person in one weekend and then you either become friends or you don't. Like you make friends really quick and you lose friends really quick. Some writers argue that the interest in cool Japan has grown so much that otaku are no longer a subculture, but a culture outright. Among anime and manga fans, you'll find fans of specific genres, such as martial arts, mecha, magical girl, shonen, shoujo, hentai. And in the costuming community, there are cosplayers, crossplayers, dollars, furries. You can spend all day exploring the different types of niche groups out there. And in a place with 29,000 fans like Otakon, you're bound to run into almost all of them. That's because for otaku, conventions are like the Super Bowl. It's the one big weekend of the year where you get to show up wearing your team's colors with your face painted and let loose. So it's nice to just kind of like let loose and you know like be a nerd. <laughs> I'm not a really big anime fan. I'm a people fan though. Okay. And like these are the kind of people like I, it's just fun to be around them when they're when they're going all out. Because yeah. there's no, there are no inhibitions. Basically. Yeah. It, you know, the whole social psychology thing. One person goes crazy, so the other person thinks it's okay to go crazy, and then everyone's going crazy, and then that's cool. 